In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create websites on your computer using the new version of the Local by Flywheel software. If you have any questions throughout this tutorial, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And let's get started. To get local, all you have to do is go to localwp.com. There's a link to it in the description down below. It's not an affiliate link. Just click it, go here download the app, it is free. There is a pro version, but the free version is all you need to get started. And all you have to do is see to click on download up here, choose your platform. In my case, I chose Mac, you would choose whatever applies to you. Then fill out your first name, last name, work email and phone number and click on get now. Then it will download to your computer. I have it downloaded already. It is on my hard drive right here. The file name in my case is called local. 5.9.7, that's the version number, and for the Mac, and it has .dmg, because that's a Mac file. Double click on that, it'll open this little folder, and then I just drag and drop local to applications. On Windows, you have an exe file, you double click on the exe file, and then you just install like a regular program on your computer. In Linux, I don't know, I've never used Linux. But in Mac, we drag it over to applications, then we go to our applications folder, and we look up local, and here it is right here. Double click on that to open it. Depending on your security settings, it may ask this question if you want to open it. I do. And then I did this earlier. Before you get to this stage right here, it would ask you to accept their terms of service. It'd show you some of the new features. And then you get into this screen right here. And this is where you can install your sites. Before we get to that, let me address this local by flywheel that you see in the folder here. This is the old version. The new version is called local. The old version is called local by flywheel. That's why I'm making this video because my older video was for the older version. What happened to me was I updated my Mac to the Big Sur update, the Big Sur OS, and now local by flywheel doesn't work anymore. So hopefully that hasn't happened to you because if it hasn't happened to you yet, you can actually open local by flywheel, export your sites by going to, by right clicking on the site on your list, exporting it, then you can import it to the local version. I have not yet investigated or figured out how I can migrate my old sites to the new one, but um, I'm sure I'll figure it out. Anyway, so to add a new site to local, just click on create new site. Let's call this my first demo site.com. Click on advanced options. Here you can set the site domain. So by default, it's dot local. You can have it be dot com or dot biz or org or whatever you want. I usually set mine to dot com. You can choose to save the folder somewhere else by default for a Mac. It's under local sites that has the sites listed here. These are all the sites from the old version. These aren't being picked up by the new one. So I have to figure out how to transfer them over. Either way, this is where it's going to save them. You can change where it saves your local sites if you want to. I'm just going to keep it there. You can choose to use a blueprint. We'll get to that in a little bit. Continue. I choose preferred for the setup. If you choose custom, you can choose the PHP version, the web server, the database. This is something you do if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing here, just choose preferred and that's more than fine. And you can then export your site from here and import it to your hosting account. And I've not encountered any problems with that yet. Click on continue. Let's add a username. Just something simple because it's my uh, local on my computer. I usually have the same one for all my sites on local. Under advanced options, you can choose to make it a WordPress multi-site or not. I'm going to choose no. Click on add site. Now it's creating our site. It's going to ask for a system password in a minute. Here it is. This allows it to change a file on Mac called the hosts file and on Windows called something else. And what it does is it will now render or show this site when you go to this domain. Under site domain, what I noticed is it's not actually a real URL. So I'm going to come in here and type in my first demo site.com change domain, ask me for a password again. And now when I click on open site, it's going to actually open this .com as long as the settings are transferred and they are, or settings are set. So it says my first demo site.com, like it's an actual domain on the internet, but it's actually not. Your computer just thinks it is. And that's how that works. That's why we ask for a password so it can change those IPs to render an actual domain name when it's not actually there. So let's do a quick run through of how this works. This is a WordPress site. If I click forward slash or type forward slash WP admin or WP dash login.php, we have a login form. I enter the password info that I just entered 
a moment ago setting up the site and we are in the website. It's going to allow that. And we zoom in because my screen's a little big and we see it's an actual running WordPress site. You can develop a site right here just like you would on a live domain name on a live server, but you're doing it locally, which is pretty awesome. So if I click on here and then you can copy this link, Let's just open that link right here. You can send this to a client and then they can view the site from their computer, wherever they are using this link. They load it right from your computer. This is not something you want to have on all the time. So you turn on live link, you'd send your client a link. You'd ask them to look at the site and say, can you let me know when you're done so I can disable the live link? Because if this is shared around, anybody can access it. So once you're done, you turn off live link. See if there is disable link. If I enable the link again, it'll now be a different link. We see this one starts with B5C and up here, our old one started with the 147. So every time you do a live link, it's a new link. You can send it to clients and they can look at the site. And inside WordPress, you can install plugins. You can license plugins. Most plugins are able to reach out to the servers like Elementor, for example, you can connect to the Elementor server to authenticate Elementor on this local site, which is fantastic. That works for pretty much all plugins I've tried. And so that allows you to create a complete website and then transfer it out to a real domain name and a real server when you're done. If you need help transferring it out, you use migration plugins for that or, or backup plugins. I have a tutorial in the card up above and the description down below to help you do that if you need help with it. Next, I wanna show you some more about Local by Flywheel. We can access the database. Quite simply, we click on database, we click on open adminner, and here is the local version of PHP my admin. You can see the entire database here and click into any one of these tables and then click on select data. And you can see all the data in the table, just like you would for PHP my admin on your hosting account. If you don't know what PHP my admin is and you don't know anything about the database, don't worry about it. This is for advanced users, but I just wanna show you that this is how you access it locally. You can also download SQL Pro, I've never had to, I've always used Admitter, that's been just fine. Under utilities, we can access the email. So if you have, for example, some kind of contact form or something that sends email on your site, you wanna be able to test the email, this is where the email goes for this website. Click on open mail hog, and this is where email arrives. So if you have, for example, a contact form seven form where you have a copy sent to you as the site admin, this is where that email would arrive. You as the site admin, so you can test a lot of things using email. Under tools, we have a bunch of pro options, which we're not gonna cover. We also have the image optimizer, which is a free add-on that allows you to optimize images as you're developing locally. So if you need that add-on, add it right here. What I usually do is I optimize them in my photo editing software. I use Photoshop, you, or you optimize them with something like ShortPixel, which is what I use on all my websites. It's an image compressor on your site. This is great when you're developing a site, but once your site is live, this option isn't gonna help you anymore because you're not gonna make every single change locally first and then port it to live, at least not usually, sometimes you would. I'll show you when you would in a minute. And I find having an image compression plugin on the website at all times once it's live is really the way to go, but you could make all your changes locally and push them to live every time there's a change if you wanted to and if you had the right hosting account. If we click on connect to host right here, we can connect to Flywheel, which is a hosting account. These are the guys also that built local or WP Engine. Either of those, we can connect to it with this local software. We can push our sites out to those hosts and make our local changes live with a few clicks. There's also a version control, I believe, which allows you to see what changes you made with every time that you pushed out. And you can add notes for changes you made every time you pushed out. You can also download the live version from the site because as the site's live, you might be getting orders from WooCommerce or comments coming in and you want to have the latest version of the site on your local machine. So you can pull back from the live to the local and then push back out from local to live with a few clicks. Right now, these are the only two hosts on here, but here's a link. If you wanna see other hosts, let us know. I've been using local by Flywheel before this for years and I've only ever seen Flywheel as an option. WP Engine was added recently. They might be taking feedback on this, but I don't think they're doing it that quickly. Anyway, even without that, it's a great piece of software. Right here is more information about the, the hosting connection. And under this puzzle piece, we have our various add-ons that you can get. These are with the free ones, I believe. The image optimizer is definitely free. I believe these are free as well. And for anybody who's super advanced, you can even create your own add-on. Click on this link, and it gives you instructions on how to use their API to create your own add-ons for local. That's pretty awesome. So let's go back to our site list, which is on the left here. 
If we add more sites, they will show up on the left. At the very beginning, I glossed over an option called Blueprint because we didn't have a Blueprint yet. But let's say you built a lot of e-commerce sites or business sites or whatever kind of site for your customers. You have a, a base version that you start from every time to be more efficient. At least I hope you do. You should if you don't. You have a base version of the site that you upload and you're ready to start customizing to meet your customers' needs. To create that blueprint, that starting version right out of Flywheel, we right click on any of these websites. So we create the site here. We go into, let me back up, go into the dashboard. We create the, the base version of the website on this domain, myfirstdemosite.com. You could even call it my blueprint site and you can keep it up to date as you go. Then you come in here, you right click on it and you choose save as blueprint. So let's call this uh, my template site, save blueprint. And now anytime we click on the plus to add a new site, under advanced options, we can choose a blueprint. You can have multiple, you have as many as you want. My site or my template site is a blueprint for maybe business sites. So every business site I start, I start with this blueprint and that makes my work just a whole lot faster. If you right click on here, you also have the ability to visit the admin dashboard, which is just out here. Also with that button, you can visit it. Visit the site, click on this link or click on this button here. You can stop the site, restart the site. What that means is when you're working locally, sites are stopped and started. Right now, this site is accessible because it's started. There's a stop site button up here to stop this individual site. There's a stop all button down here to stop all the sites you have active. If we stop them, we will now go to the site and I'll refresh and it's not gonna work because the site's turned off. And if you sent a customer a live link, that also won't work at this point because the site is turned off. To start the site, click on start site again and then it just boots it up. And you can have any number of sites running as you're working in here if you want. And you can clone the site, you can export the site, change the domain name, rename and delete the site. And those are all the big options I use in Local by Flywheel. Oh, one more thing. This little button right here, this little arrow, takes you to the files inside of that website on your computer. So it opens the folder, you go to app, then you go to public, and here are all the WordPress files right in here. The theme files, you've been to WP content and then themes, plugin files under plugins, uploads like images and stuff under uploads, and this is the file structure. These are what will be uploaded to a live server. But you can't just copy and paste these because you also wanna be able to upload the database. That tutorial I told you about earlier is the way to go to migrate your site from local to live, really from anywhere to anywhere. Again, it's in the card up above and the description down below if you need help migrating. And next, you should watch this tutorial right here where I show you to transfer websites for free using my favorite backup and migration plugin. This is what you wanna do after you've created a site locally to get it onto your server. So check out that tutorial. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time.